Hey Math 31, welcome to example eight. So this is the first time we'll be encountering a whole together. And you can see that, even though you can't see it on my view screen right here, that just below end behavior is the word whole. All right, so I wanna show you how you can identify when you have a whole on your graph, what that does to your actual graph itself, what it does to your range, all of that fun stuff. So before we get going though, I wanna take my function and I'm gonna work with it a little bit here. I'm gonna actually simplify it a bit. So, or not so much simplify it as, well, I guess you could call it simplify it, but I wanna factor it. So I want us to take a look, oops, you can't see that. I will scooch that up. I wanna take a look at our function, because I will talk about the domain. Again, we wanna always worry about or take a look at when your denominator is zero, but let, let's factor this right now. And I can factor the denominator into x minus three, x plus two. And we've been working with this denominator already this section. What I changed up was the numerator. So this is a lot like example five, but the numerator is different. And I want you to see something that's happening for the first time in this example. This is the first time we have a factor that's common to both the numerator and denominator. I haven't given you an example like that before. So if I were to divide these out, I would basically have a one over an x plus two here. So the reason I put an approximation symbol is because my original function behaves just like one over x plus two. If I were to graph that, and again, we've graphed the reciprocal function before and we could shift it left by two units. If you're not remembering what I mean when I say we've graphed the reciprocal function, give me one moment. Remember our toolkit function, the reciprocal function, one over x? Well, if there was a plus two on this denominator, I would just shift this left by two units. So this graph looks just like this graph with one exception. There is a hole in this graph. No hole here, one hole here. And the reason we have a hole, or I should say the way that we can identify that we have a hole is because we have a factor common to both the numerator and the denominator. And when we go back to that trait table, let me grab that piece of paper. When we go back to this giant trait table where we have rational functions, if you look at holes in that category, it says, is there an X value that zeroes out both the numerator and denominator? And this is the first time we're encountering that. All right, so we're gonna address that when we get to that trait, but we're not there yet. At this point, I wanna see, I, I take a look and my denominator zeroes out two places. It zeroes out at three and it zeroes out at negative two. So let me go ahead and put those into my domain or I should really say take them out of my domain. Oops. Okay. So I've got my domain written up. The next trait asks for an x-intercept. And if you recall, an x-intercept means I wanna set my fraction to zero. And the only way for a fraction to be zero is if my numerator is zero. And again, it's, this is under the stipulation that the x value doesn't also make the denominator zero. So let me go through all of this, okay? So I'm gonna scooch this up so we can work on x-intercepts here. All right, so if I wanna talk about an x-intercept, right, we would let y equal zero. So that means I wanna let my function, x minus three over x minus three x plus two equals zero, all right? And that would mean I wanna set, well, anytime a fraction is zero, the numerator was zero. So you might say, oh, I have a zero at three, but, and this is a key but, but this three also zeroes out the denominator, right? So this is not actually going to be my x-intercept. Again, my original function behaves just like one over x plus two, except there's a hole here. And take a look at this, this one over x plus two. When does this numerator ever equal zero? It doesn't. Or another way of saying that is there is no value of x. There's nothing I can plug into my original function that will zero out just my numerator because as soon as I zero out my numerator with x equaling three, it automatically knocks out my denominator, or I should say zeroes out my denominator. So what this is trying to say ultimately is if I go back to all of my traits, I don't have any x-intercepts. This rational function is not going to cross the x-axis, which is fine. It doesn't have to. 
All right, now in terms of a y-intercept, we find y-intercepts when we let x be equal to zero. So let's go find this y-intercept. All right, let me get that situated. So for a y-intercept, I want f of zero. That would be zero minus three on the numerator. And I'd have zero, zero, and then negative six here. So I would ultimately have a y-intercept of zero, one-half. So let's go draw that in. Zero, one-half, actually let me label and scale my axes. All right, so I've got my, my y-intercept drawn in. All right, for a vertical asymptote, let's go back to my function. I know I have it down here. I'm gonna be scooching a lot in this one. All right, so we look at our function. Is there a value of x that zeroes out just your denominator? All right, to go back to that trait table, right? When we're in the rational function column, if I wanna find a vertical asymptote, I need an x value that zeroes out only the denominator. And if I have that, I'm gonna write my vertical, uh, vertical asymptote in the form x equaling a number. All right, so is there a value of x that zeroes out just my denominator? Well, we've talked that three and negative two zero out the denominator. Three, yes, it zeroes out the denominator, but it also zeroes out the numerator at the same time. But negative two, well, negative two just zeroes out my denominator. All right, my numerator doesn't get zeroed out with negative two, so I do have a vertical asymptote. I have one specifically at x equaling negative two. And I'll go write that in in a moment. I wanna focus in on the end behavior. So for end behavior, right, we're always looking at degrees of numerators and denominators. So the degree of my numerator is equal to one. The degree of my denominator is, what do we got, two? Whenever the degree in your numerator is strictly less than the degree in your denominator, you will have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, right? So I have a horizontal asymptote, no arrows, no slants, just the horizontal, okay? Now for a hole, all right, holes, here's our first time looking at a hole. So if we're in that rational function column and I go to hole, is there an x value that zeroes out both the numerator and denominator? And we have one. And when you do, you owe me an ordered pair, x comma y. All right, so let's talk about this. I have a hole at x equaling three, because you can see if I plug three into my numerator, it zeroes out, three into my denominator, it zeroes out. But I need a y coordinate. So the big question comes, well, how do I find that y coordinate? Well, here's what you do. You take that x value that you found, three, and you plug it into whatever was not canceled out from your function. So when I say what was not canceled out, you see that I had my original function, I factored it. These would cancel out and leave me with one over x plus two. So what you're going to do is plug three into whatever was left over. And if I plug three into there, I have one on the numerator, three plus two is five. So ultimately I have one fifth here. So I wanna say that again, just so we can see it. You will have a hole whenever you have a factor common to the numerator and denominator. Figure out what x value that corresponded to. In this case, it was x equaling three. So I will take three, my x value three, and plug it into whatever did not cancel out. And whatever that y value is there, that's the y value of my hole. Okay, so with that, the last, trait I put on my graph was the y-intercept, so I need to put the vertical asymptote, I need to put the horizontal asymptote, and I need to put the hole. So I'm gonna scooch this back up so we get the entire graph in view. All right, so let me start putting these in. So I had a vertical asymptote at x equaling negative two. Okay, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equaling zero. All right, and I have a hole 
at three comma one fifth. So holes, they, they are just what they sound like. They're holes in the graph. So let me go to three one fifth and I need to put a hole there because I am missing that Y value. Okay, so with that, let's see what our function is going to look like. And it's gonna look a lot like one over X plus two. All right, and we know that your basic one over X, your reciprocal function is up here and down here, but it's been shifted left by two. So I can see that graph playing out. All right here it comes, and then it will just head up like so. Now, if I want some points on this side to ground me, I could either plug in by hand or I could use my, my technology. I'm gonna opt for technology. So let's go here, protect my numerator with parentheses and protect that trinomial down on the denominator with parentheses. I'll hit zoom six. And that's pretty much what I'm getting. That looks good. Let me get some Y or ordered pairs. So it looks like I have negative three, negative one, and negative four, negative one half. Let me draw those in. So negative three, negative one, negative four, negative one half, okay. That's looking pretty good. Now, I wanna show you how you can sort of, or your calculator can assist you in checking that you have a hole. Your calculator has like three pixels on it. It's worse than the Atari 2600. It's nothing like an Xbox or a PlayStation or whatever is cool now in, in um, game, in, in video games. Um, but there is a way to detect that you have a hole. You can't see it. I can't look at this and be like, oh, there's definitely a hole at three comma one fifth. But this is how you can detect it. If I think there's a hole here, hit second and trace pick option one, let's do a value, and plug in three. I'm going to hit enter, and do you see my calculator leave my y value blank? All right, that's your calculator's way of saying, hey, there is no y value there, there was a hole. I, I have only four pixels, so I can't show it to you on the graph, but I can show it to you numerically, okay? All right, now range is another fun one to try and tackle when there's holes because there's other Y values we may or may not have to give the boot to. It really depends on the graph. If I look at the range, I see my arrows heading down and I see this arrow heading up, but stuff happens in the middle here. So I'm gonna go negative infinity all the way to my Y, um, sorry, all the way to my horizontal asymptote at Y equaling zero, right? So I don't hit Y equaling zero. I hop on the other side of Y equaling zero for just a bit. And then do you see I have a hole here? So I also, do not hit the y value of one fifth. There is a hole. There is no function, or there is no x value I can plug in where I get one fifth back out. So again, I'm going negative infinity to zero. Hop on the other side of zero, just up to one fifth, I hit a hole. Other side of one fifth, up to positive infinity. Okay, so with that, let me go ahead, scooch this pretty far up. Okay, and let me get this back over. All right, I think that's decent for now. So my range is I started all the way down. I hit my horizontal asymptote. I came on the other side of my horizontal asymptote and then I hit my hole. And again, I'm only using these Y values because ranges have to do with Ys. I got on the other side of my hole and I took that up arrow all the way to positive infinity. Okay, all right. So with that, let's talk about another vocab term that some people throw out when they're talking about these holes. Oops, excuse me. Let me not show you all of that. Okay. So a removable discontinuity occurs in the graph of a rational function at x equals a if a is a factor, is a zero for a factor in the denominator that is common with a factor in the numerator. We factor the numerator and denominator and check for common factors. If we find any, we set the common factor equal to zero and solve, and this is the location of the removable discontinuity. So this is just a fancy way of saying what I showed you up here, that if you ever come across a rational function and you have a factor common to the numerator and denominator, that's gonna be the location of the whole. And how you can figure out what the y coordinate is, is you plug that x value into whatever wasn't canceled out. And in this case, that was one over x plus two. 
Now, why do we call this a removable discontinuity? Well, this starts to get into how nutty math people can get. All right, the reason we call this removable is because this is how bored people got in the 1700s. They were like, oh, look at these discontinuities. I have a vertical asymptote, that's a discontinuity, and I have a hole. These are two types of discontinuities. We call this removable, this is non-removable. And here's why. Let's say again, you were bored. There was no PlayStation, you had nothing to do in the 1700s, and you were trying to trace this function out with your pencil. You would have to lift your pencil twice, right? So I would be coming across this piece, but to hop to the other piece, to hop over the vertical asymptote, I have to lift my pencil and come up here, right? And then as I'm tracing this out, I have to hop over this hole and come over here. Okay, so what folks wanted to do was say, is there a way to remove any of these? Could I fill this graph in, in any way and actually remove this discontinuity? Well, are you with me that if you then decided to fill this hole in, you would no longer need to lift your pencil? Your pencil? You would no longer need to lift your pencil. Right? I could remove that discontinuity if I wanted to. It's just possible to remove it. Whereas with this vertical asymptote, there's nothing you can fill in so that you could remove this discontinuity. Because if you wanted to fill it in, you'd have to connect these dots and you would have to connect it over a vertical line. And then your equation would fail to be a function. So we call holes removable discontinuities and we call vertical asymptotes non-removable discontinuities. And when you go major in math and go up the calculus chain, we'll learn certain properties about removables versus non-removables. All right, so with that, that's the last rational function we're going to graph together, but we're gonna take a look at the backwards problems. And that's gonna be where I give you a bunch of traits and you give me the equation of the function. So for the last four examples, I've given you the equation and you listed off some traits and made me a graph. Now I'm gonna list, I'm gonna give you some traits and I want you to get backwards to that function. All right, we got one more to tackle and then we'll be out of this beast of a section. I'll see you in a bit, bye.